Well, that sounds like wind to me. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 133 for Thursday, the 6th of July, post nertacular special. I'm Amos, Kent's not fucking here, so I got Jury Facts instead because he's way cooler and less available. How you doing, man? Not too bad. Yourself? What's going on? Hey, man, I'm I'm here. Uh, I'm, I survived. I don't have uh, I don't have the con crud. Uh, too bad. <clears throat> <clears throat> I mean, uh, you know, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> uh, we just got in listening to some uh, some Get Set Go, uh, a little song called "I Want to Kill My Neighbor Dog." And he's supposed to be here today. He might show up a little bit later, but if not, we're just going to go ahead and roll through the episode without him. Um, we are here specifically this week, as we like to do, as we are uh, like to do, to review the wonderful event that was Nerdtacular 2017. That thing was so much fun. Okay, okay. So that, Straight out of the gate, that thing was absolutely amazing. First one I've been to, hopefully not the last. That, that, that's exactly what I was going to ask, it, is if this was your first one. It's my first and hopefully not last one. It was a blast. I loved every aspect of it. Yeah, I, I, I went there. I took my daughters, Amber and Ashley, um, and we had a hoot. Oh, my gosh. They loved the game room. They loved the, uh, a lot of the, the, the events, especially the All-Stars game. Um, <laughs> man, it was, just, it was just a blast. You showed up late, though, man. What the hell? How are you going to show up late? Well, I mean, you know, it's not, I mean, I mean, screw you guys, right? (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. Tell us uh, how you really feel. You know, uh, mother nature. Uh, and by that, I mean me oversleeping. Um, and then, uh, mother car of disaster nature, you know, flat tire. And then, uh, not getting to the airport on time to make the first flight kind of set me behind. (laughs) You know, it's so, uh, it's so, a, it was a culmination of things that so, resulted in me being late. What you're saying is that Nectacular <laughs> might not have been all that great, but the fact that you weren't suffering through all that other shit anymore was elated you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> sitting in, in an airport while everybody's taking selfies and pictures and, you know, uh, you know, just kind of enjoying the the meet and greets and you know yeah. hanging out and all this other stuff and you know i'm just sitting in an airport now we did we did call you out uh we have a little special episode that i recorded we did a little live stream from the, from the meet and greet the official meet and greet there at nertacular uh about 26 minutes long or so and of course uh jotmon decided it would be a good idea to go ahead and publish that on the youtubes so that's available out there and uh uh, maybe Joe Mon will drop that uh, drop that link in there because I forgot to grab it, but he did put it out there so everybody can watch it. Um, the audio isn't all that great, but it was fun. We got we got a lot of people on there that we wouldn't have gotten on the show because of time constraints or, or just because we decided to video bomb them, stream the stream bomb them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, screw it, right? Um, but yeah, we we, uh, we we were missing you because it was like this would be the perfect thing for for Tom to handle. Like where where the hell's Jerry Facts at? Um, well, if you take a look at that real quick, that's where I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was sitting, uh, waiting on my third layover or my third, uh, my third attempt at getting onto a flight. Hmm. Yeah. So let's, uh, let, let's cut to that real quick and it goes something like this. Hopefully it works out. No, you're chopped in half. Ah, uh, you don't matter. Um, so yeah, there, okay. there's a, uh, there, there's that. Yeah. That's a, that's a beautiful picture of, of you sitting in the airport. Um, I, w- I wouldn't call that a scowl. Uh, maybe just look of utter failure and disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It was, it was, uh, <laughs> the opposite of elation. Oh yeah. I mean, I can, I can see that. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> you, so I, I kept asking everybody all night, like, hey, have you seen Jerry Facts? Have you seen Jerry Facts? Have you seen Jerry Facts? Then Kent's like, hey, why don't you just text him? And I was like, no, I can't be bothered. I got a beer in front of me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> He's not that important. It was, it was, it was, uh, it was odd. It was di- definitely different. Um, but you did finally get there. You got there, what, uh, uh, Thursday morning? 
fr- uh, fr- Friday morning. Friday morning. At, I got. I think I got in the room at like three or four a.m. or something like that. Hmm. It was. It, it was bad. I mean, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, well, at the beginning of the morning, I <laughs> <laughs> I got there and it was great. So I mean, you know, I missed a little bit, but I was there for most of it. Um. So. For people that that may not know, like uh, there's one person out there that's listening right now doesn't know it doesn't not know what Nertacular is or was hopefully not was. How would you sum it up in uh, uh, find arbitrary number uh, eight words? Sum sum up Nertacular in eight words. <laughs> that's too many words. Uh... <laughs> I rolled a one to um, useless and came up with eight. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, fun is got to be number one. Um, original. God damn all these words. Um, uh, it uh, it was definitely Jesus. Um, fun, original, uh, laid back, uh, organized, uh, fun again. Uh, Mountainy. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna use uh, uh, a verbal or a, a visual cue for this one. Smoking. <laughs> um, and uh, tired. <laughs> tired. Yeah. That, that is that is that is definitely true. That is definitely true. Um, I would I would have gone with the. Uh, uh, Nertacular is an amazing family friendly Diamond Club experience. Nine. <laughs> no, Diamond Club's only one word. Eight. <laughs> um, everything that South by is as far as getting drunk and partying for like a week straight and just hanging out in bars. Nertacular is the exact opposite of that. It's yeah. There's no loud thumping music. You can actually sit down and just have a conversation anywhere. There's active engagement. There's not just like one event that you're kind of hoping to go to, you know, the one thing that you have to make and then help maybe find some other stuff. There's it's constant nonstop, like from nine or from 10 o'clock in the morning until midnight, both nights, it was just, full on there's stuff to do. There's, there's entertainment handed to you and almost all of it was family friendly. (laughs) I, I attended almost all of it. I missed a little bit. I missed a few things. We'll we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, I wouldn't say I missed it. I skipped a few things that I probably shouldn't have, uh, because of, of of other reasons, but, um, yeah, it, it was, it was really fun. Uh, it's hosted by, well, it was hosted by Scott Johnson of frog pants and man, there was just, there's so much going on. You missed Thursday, the opening reception and the meet and greet. I'm, l- I'm looking at the schedule now and holy crap. That was a weird experience because you, me and Ken had gotten there Wednesday. We'd already met up with a lot of people and then people started filtering in on Thursday. And by Thursday evening, you'd figure I would have already met most of the people coming in, but then there were people showing up at the meet and greet that I hadn't seen at all yet. And it was just insane. <laughs> um, it was like, I can't, a, I can't speak to that. Cause I was, no, it, it was like, it was like a classy affair. Like they had, you know, like bars that were open in underneath this huge tent. And then you had like this little smoking area where people were smoking. I don't think they were supposed to, but they were. And then you had like, eventually th- this little group of, of diamond clubbers kind of coalesced around the entrance and it was weird. I don't, I don't know why that that was, but that's how it ended. Because they started out, all the diamond clubs were mixed in between all the frog pants or stuff like that. But by the end of the little meet and greet, when when eight o'clock, nine o'clock came around, everybody was kind of condensed into one small little area. And it was like diamond club was like this big, versus frog pants is like huge. <laughs> um, but it was still it was really welcoming, really fun time. I got to meet a whole lot of people I hadn't met before, and that was probably the. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but knowing you the way that I do, that was probably one of the events that you really wanted to go to because it was just meeting people and seeing people and greeting people. 
I mean, I, honestly, that was <clears throat> that was one of the things that I I really was just super super looking forward to. Um, you know, cause obviously, I mean, you know, I'm not afraid to like go up and talk to people and all this other stuff. Like it, it would have been so much fun to, to meet new people. I mean, obviously, I mean, I still caught up with everybody I, I feel for the most part, but that opening ceremony, so to speak mm -hmm. is, is something that I, I was, that's the one thing I was disappointed about out of all the, you know, travel hiccups and all that stuff. But I mean, you know, it, it's uh, I guess it kind of is what it is. But I, I really would have enjoyed that. It, the everything, it, all the pictures and the videos and stuff that I saw, it just looked like an amazing time, you know. Yep. So I, I really hope that I get a chance again to to go. And, for uh, for a non event, it was really fun. Which I say that because I get bored very easily. But it, there was no point during that which I was like, oh man, I wish we could just move on to the next thing. You know, <laughs> what's next? Yeah, exactly. No, it, it was fun. We got to got to meet and greet everybody. And mission accomplished, right? Um, the next day, we started the actual the actual con part of it. Um, Scott came in there. He did his long the longest introduction ever. It was like a two hour introduction for all the the main producers of the shows and stuff like that to come on, and. It, he made it entertaining. Like they came up and he told stories about each one of them. And there's like the, the he kept forgetting to click the little the button to make the slide progress to the next person. And yeah. uh, it was it was kind of like like well, well this is how this weekend's gonna be. Uh, it really set the tone, um, which was fun. I mean it was it was it was a good time. So then yeah the uh, the the intros was really neat, especially for someone who is only a, a casual observer of frog pants. Mm -hmm. So getting to actually put names and faces with a lot of the people was really helpful for me to be like, Oh, that's who that is that I listen to every once in a while. And right. you know, that's the name that I see in tweets and pictures. You know what I mean? Like it's that's, that's really helpful. And boy, are they bad at Mario Kart? So I know <laughs> like I don't play video games, but damn, <laughs> like oh boy, couldn't find the gas pedal. It was it was oh it was just awful. Well, the first one was awful, and the second one was really really close, which was enhanced by the fact the first one was so bad. Uh, they played Mario Kart on stage. Two two rounds of people played Mario Kart on stage, and uh, the first one was was I, I I think one of the people I forget who it was, but he he completed like half a lap, and then I think it was with Jocelyn or whatever completed you know finished the race in like second place. And then the second go around, the two people, I forget who they were, but the two people were like neck and neck the entire time. I think it was it Patrick and Nicole? Patrick? Uh, yeah, I think so. So, Patrick from France. He's from France. I didn't recognize him at first because I didn't see his scarf, but that's totally different. And then we did uh, DTNS, and DTNS was really cool. Tom hooked me up and did a favor and allowed me to give uh, Kent his birthday present on stage at the event. Uh, which of course it was a a work from Len Peralta that I had had commissioned out, so it kind of worked as a as a you know twofer. That was really cool how you managed to get all of that arranged <laughs> to go down. That, that was that, amazing. That was huge shout out to Time Jumper and Mitsula because I got there and they finally arrived on Wednesday the Thursday morning. And I handed it off to them, and they went around during the meet and greets and everything else, during Smoke Monster, all that kind of stuff, and got all those signatures. I think I, I got like two signatures out of the probably 30 that were on there by the time I gave it to Kent. And then, of course, Kent got some more as the weekend went on. But that is all, that's all them. That was all of them kicking ass and making that happen. So, so many thanks to them. Um, and, of course, I forgot to mention Smoke Monster, which was right after the meet and greet. Uh, it's, a, it's an unofficial, official event. Everybody goes. Some people don't stay very long, but Mitsula brings out like, I don't know, 50 cigars that he hand rolls in Vegas, brings them out there and just passes them out. And man, I didn't make it. I, I, I missed out on that one. Oh, you didn't make it down for mm, Smoke Monster? No. Uh, that was the first night I'd been walking around all day long and my leg was not having it. So mm, I right. decided to call it an early night and, and get up early for the morning, which is good because, well, Kent didn't make it up so early and he missed out on like the first, the first panel and a half. 
He barely. Well, I mean, to be fair, he normally does that, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It, he normally doesn't wake up. This was one of those times, just like South by when we went to South by this year. That's where I was. I I said, "Screw it, I'm not waiting for him." And everybody saw me downtown and asked me where Kent was. This time it was the same way. You'd see me down on, on the conference floor, and everybody'd be asking, "Hey, where's Kent?" Like, fuck, I don't know. He's probably still sleeping. Like, it's not my turn to watch him. Is it your turn to watch him? Because I'm not watching no more. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I think he, he barely made it down in time after lunch to get, uh, to get to the DTNS panel to begin with, um, which was making me a little nervous, you know, <laughs> I'd already, like, gone, already gone through and, and finagled it out with, uh, with Tom and everything else to, to do the presentation as soon as DTNS was over and whoo, he wasn't going to make it. That would have been the worst. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, uh, looky there, looky, looky there. What? 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 What happened? What's this? Is this? Is this? We're 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 getting a uh a, a slight inter interruption here. Okay. Uh, let's see if uh let's see see if my scenes are working right. <clears throat> um, can you guys hear? Ah, oh, yes, we can. There we go. Oh, that's what's going on. <laughs> All right. What I guess let me, let me see. So what what am I okay, what am I listening to? How am I hearing why am I hearing? <laughs> All right. Uh hold on. Wait, no, this so I need this. And see, this is, all right. I think it's all right. I think I think I am sorting it out. How are you guys doing? <laughs> oh, we're doing good. What's going on, Mike? <laughs> are you guys is this so are we doing video or no? Uh you, if you want to pop your video on, you are more than welcome to. Okay. Uh, but good, 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 we uh, we we are live, so. Uh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, and I'm so sorry. I I I I'm, I am. It's ridiculous that um that I uh, I was making. So I I realized I committed to doing 15 listens this this Monday, and and I realized that that means I have to listen to an hour length record 15 times between now and Monday, and so I just got I got working on this album and and just got totally lost track of time. I'm so sorry. No I'm a jerk. Uh, and 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 now we actually have you on screen, so now you okay. can actually say hi to the people. Awesome! Hey, everybody! All right, now let me see. Uh, and then where am I going for? Um, uh, it's Diamond TV. What's the channel? Uh, we're on channel one. Okay, cool. Cause, nice. Because we're we're pimp, me? pimptastic like that on Thursday nights when nobody else wants to come. Yeah. On. Uh, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, hold on. Okay. <laughs> um, I need to mute this. And then what's all right? So here, on, let, let me just mute. Okay, and then there we go. Play. <laughs> Come on! Oh shit! You know what? Because I, I, I don't think I, I don't think I restarted my, I don't think I'm gonna be able to watch it. Curses! Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, okay, there we go. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Actually, if 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 you just want to, uh, I will. Uh, I'll do this right here, and then you'll be able to see what's going on on the screen. <laughs> and then I'll. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So you can just look at the video feed that I'm sending you through Skype. And oh yeah, yeah. Perfect. Viola. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So, so yeah. So sorry, <laughs> sorry about the chaos. But uh, yeah, how you guys doing, man? Uh, we're doing awesome. We're, uh, we're we're chatting about Nerdtacular. You were there. You uh, you, you were actually a pretty big part of it. Uh, for for a guy that wasn't even on the, on the slate, you I, I came came away with. I was not the only person going. Uh, 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 fuck, 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 <laughs> motherfucker. Like the song was stuck. Yeah. And I, actually, we we opened the show with that song tonight, uh, just just for you in case you didn't make. Oh, did you? Oh, awesome. Um, that is <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, that that song. It's really funny. I, I like when they when you know when Justin and Brian were like, hey, you know, we we want you to come up. Like we didn't. As always, I got I got no notice whatsoever. So I was like, I'm like, all right, well then, what am I gonna do <laughs> now? I can do. So um, I was like, I I, I don't want to I don't want to do like the I hit everyone and die motherfucker die. I've, I've done those songs a bunch. So I'm like, all right, let me figure out something else. But but it's always nice to have a song, you know. That's a big anthemic, getting people screaming "fuck" over and over again. So, <laughs> I, I, I I can definitely see the appeal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, and I and I see in the chat there's bad weave that right on man. Good to see you. Um. Anyway, so so where, where I, I don't mean to in, uh, intrude. I'm so sorry, guys. Where are we? Uh, like what what are we, what were we talking about when I? Um. Uh, we are uh, we 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 were on Friday. Uh. Which which actually cuts out a good portion of of my conversation with you on Thursday morning. Whenever, mm -hmm. When I ran into you, um, 
I think I think our conversation on Thursday morning really wraps up what's different about Nerdtacular versus any other conven- convention you can go to. We sat and while in the lobby of the hotel, had a forty-five minute conversation about whatever randomness came to mind. Yeah, we, we talked about music, about inspiration, and about uh, uh, the meaning behind lyrics and and how the music. Uh, we, we talked about all kinds of shit, and you can't get that. You can't just meet somebody at a convention and have a conversation somebody who's basically a headliner on, on the, on the docket um, and just have a conversation with him at a random, you know, at a random place in a con. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it, it's, it's really funny. Cause uh, you know, I, I've, I, the only conventions I've gone to were of, of that kind of stripe were Comic-Con back. I start, I started going to Comic-Con in 1989 as a fan. I started going to Comic-Con as a, professionally in 1992 and, um, and it's funny cause when, back then, you know, when, when we started, it was the, like, like when I first heard comic con, it was like the artists were walking around you'd be like, Oh my God, you know, you're so-and-so and, uh, and they were approachable and everybody was friendly. And, and then as it kind of picked up steam, it became the distance between the people who made stuff and the people that were fans of the stuff, that stuff began to get more and more dramatic until eventually it was like Grand Canyon, you know, like, you know, I need to leap this in order to, in order to like, re, in order to even have any sort of substantive connection with, with these people, you know, and that's sad, like, because it, man, Nerdtacular just, it was awesome. You know, it, 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 uh, it was, in fact, it was really funny because for me, like I could definitely tell on occasions so I'd, I'd be meeting somebody or talking to him and I could tell that there was a little bit of like, um, uh, you know, like, like, oh, I know you, but you don't know me kind of thing. But for, but for me, it was like, they're, you're, they're all my people. Every single person there was my people. And I was like, hell yes, you know. Um, so, yeah, it was, just, it was just awesome. It was just awesome. Now, as far as, uh, as, far as the Frog Pants part of the community, how, how much of that were you actually immersed in that? Was that all new to you, or, or is that something that you're, you're pretty comfortable with and pretty familiar with? I, I'm, I am, I, I am familiar in the sense that I've done some exploration at, 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 at you know, at, at various times over the over the course of years since I first discovered, so I know I know some of Scott Johnson's podcasts and I'll tell like, but I I just haven't. Yeah, the thing is, is that like I don't I, I don't have a titanic amount of time for listening to anything. I haven't I haven't for um for years now just because I'm I've always got something going on. So so for me it's funny like when we a lot of my friends when they tour they'll download a bunch of podcasts and tour with those when we tour i i, I usually do books on tape i think i'm going to change that and do a smattering of both so yeah oh, always trying to get smart on us i see uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, hey mike i'm just curious who who is somebody that you met there over the weekend that you hadn't met before like um you know so so uh i mean basically Basically, I'd say ninety percent of the people that that I met were people that I had not yet met before. Oh, are you talking about? Are you talking about just 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 uh, just convention goers, or are you talking about um, uh, actual streamers? Because the streamers, uh, like, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say like something along like the like the streamers or you know the the panelists, you know, something like that, like some of those type of people that you haven't met before. Yeah, that that was basically. I mean, other than other than. Um, Brian and and uh, Justin, Tom Merritt, um, and and Scott. I mean, the thing is, is, I don't even think I don't even think I think maybe. Oh no 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 no. There was were there. Yeah, I think that's all the streams. There were a couple people from Twit that I that I that I recalled from from days back in Twit, but but um, but uh, but yeah, but but I don't think they were streamers. So yeah, I I think that was I think those were the only people with whom. Um, that I, like I had any any prior relationship with everybody else were kind of like people that I, I knew I knew from a from a distance but uh, but yeah but it was the first time me, of me, me getting a chance to hang out with them. Nice. And and that's what that's what Nerdtacular is all about <laughs> is being able to meet, meet people and hang out with them and uh, and and go to these, <laughs> these goofy ass events. How much of the how much of the convention did you actually attend as far as the scheduled events? You know, in the main conference in main main room. I caught I um well let me think so I caught I caught the the um the frog pants the the um the the movie one um I caught uh I caught the Tom Merritt the 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 panel that Tom and um JF uh Dubow uh that was moderated by 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 Justin uh that they had that panel where they were talking about discussing writing mm. um I caught all of the frog pants all star stuff 
um, I caught I caught a little bit of um, and then and then I I mean and then I I kind of popped in and out so I would catch like 15 20 minutes or something but it's funny uh, uh, between the, I, I I had drinking buddies and they would come find me and demand to go drinking at weird moments in, in the, in the day. And I'm like, all right, if, you know, like if I must, if you're going to twist my arm and put booze in my, in my throat, sure. <laughs> so the thing is like, so, so that definitely, that definitely kind of uh, intruded on, on some of my, uh, some of my uh, time actually in the panels. That, that was one thing that, that, was, that I, did, I did notice that between, did, um, uh, oh, we're getting some oh, we're feedback getting... from you, Mike. Oh, uh, okay. Your audio is a little hot. Um, one of the yeah. things that I noticed w- between the Diamond Club people and the Frog Pan people were that you'd see a bunch of Frog Panzer, fa- Frog Panzers, Tadpole people sitting down eating lunch, and there'd be like these little groups of four or five. Yeah. You know? And then they'd all be just having lunch and you know drinking waters and sodas. And then you'd see <laughs> Diamond Club, and there'd be fifty of us on three tables, and then we'd have margaritas just thrown around the table. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all we're all out there either getting hammered or we're still recovering from the night before. It, it was <laughs> that was one one defining difference. And and I asked asked my daughters. I was like, so if I point to a table, do you think you can identify if they're frog pant people or diamond club people? And they're like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I, I, I tried yeah. it like two or three times, and they were like. Those are Diamond Club. Yep, and those are Frog Pants. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There was that was there was a, a ferocious amount of of like, uh, and it's crazy because I actually took I took uh, all of June off from drinking, and I'm like, all right, well, I'll drink it, you know, I'll drink it, uh, you know, at, at Nerdtacular, and any any healing that my liver got to do uh, over the course of June <laughs> was was completely eradicated by because I like literally like I, I mean I had. I think I think on Saturday we started drinking at like ten thirty. Like we we went straight from breakfast over to the bar. So I'm like, oh my god, mm. uh, yeah, pretty yeah. crazy. Um, so, did you see Paul and Storm? I did. Yes, I caught I, I caught the the very tail end of their show because yeah. uh, we yeah because we were uh, uh, I, I was corralling Will at the, by that by that point in time it was it was literally corralling Will. So it, it was yeah. so the first night. I talked about the, the DTNS, and then we went to the Frog Pants All-Stars competition, which if you haven't seen that, go back and watch all of them from all the years. That is always a hilarious time. It's fun just to, to self-check your, you know, on, on your geekness, um, especially when it comes to music and movies and random Brian Ibbett pop trivia questions. But it went long, so we cut into yeah. dinner time. So we went to dinner. And we skipped the live, uh, the drawing and the story panel art with uh, Scott Johnson and Terp, uh, Mark Turpin. Uh, we skipped that because we were at dinner. We came back and we were we were not in a hurry to come back because it's Paul and Storm. It's just it's just Paul and Storm, you know. We'll make it back when we make it back. And I we finished dinner. We walked in on the Paul and Storm show, and immediately, like within within a minute or two, I regretted not being there for the whole thing. Yeah, like they were yeah. hilarious. That was a good show. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's funny. Um, I I I forget who was telling so, someone. Maybe it was maybe it was Edgimon. Somebody was saying uh, that uh, they were trying as while they were while they were performing, they were trying to figure out what was improv and what was actually rehearsed. It was, it was like it literally felt they're like it feels like a Broadway, like it feels like like a fully scripted show. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's so it was so on point and on the nose and like clever and like the entire time. And know? they it's play just, off like, each other like spot on. There's no yeah. There's no looking at each other and trying to see who's going to take what step next. It was just, it was just yeah, on point yeah. every time. It was, yeah, it was great. Yeah. And it was hilarious. And, of course, it made me download all their music on Apple Music immediately afterwards <laughs> and listen to that on the plane. So um, that was a great show. And, of course, they followed that up with the live jury show and the Night Attack show, which I – it it was – so so jury's live shows are always one step away from the biggest shit show you've ever seen. <laughs> like he straddles that line he rides it very very closely you're waiting for it to fail miserably every time and without fail he does not disappoint he pulls through he makes you laugh the show was great it's a it's a it's a it's a, a wonderful experience to be there and see it live but it like constantly like there's always one one wrong word or one little misstep and it would have just gone straight into the shit show pile and it was hilarious. I loved it. Yeah, man. It, it, it was, it was, 
It, the, like the uh, the whole uh, Texas, it's Texas. Like, like I mean, that just so, so they start off. They start off reading. You know, they start off reading these letters, and uh, yeah, I, I, you know, and it's it's really funny because the thing is, is that like by that point in time, by that point in time, uh, and I and I I don't mean I don't mean to because I let me let me just say, um, I had been drinking by that by that t- point in, in the evening. I've been drinking from like ten thirty, and uh, no, it was, it was Friday. So about noon, I'd started drinking around noon. Mm-hmm. So I, I was I was pretty much three sheets to the wind by the time we got there. And Will Will has brought I'm like I, I'm like I'm like Will, I put some beers in the fridge for us. So when we get back in tonight, you know, post midnight wherever we are, <laughs> we'll have some beers. So he comes walking in and he's got a, the bag filled with be- he's just got a bag filled with the beers that I put in the fr- and I'm like and he's like can you open these for me and I'm like yeah of course <laughs> like all right and so so we were all we were already shit faced you know and so we polish off like all six beers right before we go up and I'm like oh my god so uh, so yeah so the thing is like so uh, so the, the 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 my memory is not 100% spotty but my memory of like the the actual individual jokes is a little bit is a little bit tough but um but I do remember the 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 like the the letters amongst the letters was like like every time the Brian and Texas thing was just like coming which is so funny cuz that's not the Texas I know at all but I'm like all right that's, that's <laughs> he he grew up here so he knows <clears throat> I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a great idea. His little other people's problems. Um, yeah. And, and the the whole the whole line of it was he's reading these stories these these catastrophic failures in life from you know listeners of his show, and they're I I, I would like to read what the fourth one was that fourth one that he he didn't have time for that he put off to the side. I would love to have read that because the three that he picked, you know the the guy who's sitting on his dick. The, yeah. the guy that finds out that his that his girlfriend is getting a tattoo his of tattoo. this other dude. <laughs> so and, ridiculous. And he's I mean, paying I mean, for it. <laughs> yeah, I was losing my mind. I'm like, there's no way that somebody like 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 oh my god. <laughs> do you guys so does 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 the whole does the chat know these uh, do they know these stories? Should we should we kind of regale um give a I, little synopsis real quick? We can. They, they've all been published, so they, they, they should not be too far behind. Um, okay, cool. But yeah, it's... <laughs> holy crap. I, I, what was the third one? The third one was the chick, and I don't remember what it yeah. was. Um, uh, that she was she, that, she was the one... That was the... Um, uh, curses. <laughs> Uh, Crunchy says, uh, I was honestly a little disappointed that his promised anatomy lesson was that dicks are bigger when you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I know they get smaller when you gain weight. That's, that's the part of the story that I know. <laughs> that's all I can, all I can testify to. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, so, so after jury did his little thing with, with his, um, Oh, we, we didn't even mention that he did his Kickstarter that morning and it, it funded within oh, the yeah. first, the first show wasn't even a, like with, under three hours or just over three hours, the new Kickstarter for action news funded. And he was dressed up in this like 1970s, uh, news anchor regalia all day with this, this, sh- that shitty mustache he's had for months now. Um, just did, but, did you did you happen to catch it catch the fact that he brought his own mic? Oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. Cause I asked okay. him, I asked him where it was. <laughs> I when he, that was hilarious. <laughs> I, I, I asked him where where it was when he did his uh, his normal show and we came up to do his show and he was like, oh yeah, it's in the room. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was yeah that was that was pretty that was pretty epic that he managed to to fund it in that first like that you know, it, it was like that was a huge. I know that that was a, like a huge sigh of relief. Like you know, like everybody's like. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, and then, of course, right after the jury show was not attack, and that's when you came on stage, Mike. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of that you remember. I don't know I do, how much so, of it I remember. So I, <laughs> so I, I do. So I, the thing is, like, so that, so all of that, I, I, I remember pretty well because the thing is, is like, yeah, yeah. I, it was mostly, it was mostly beer. It was just I, I wasn't, you know, like leading up to that when they're like, you're gonna go on next. I just needed to like review, like I just need to make sure, can I still play? Uh, maybe I should come up with some chord progressions so that if they ask me to play something, I've got something kind of in mind because I'm not gonna be able to just wing it, you know. So I, that was kind of the stuff that that kind of prevented me from kind of like, you know, m- m- remembering everything that was leading into me going on. But, but, um, uh, but yeah. So, so because that that. Uh, 
but it, yeah, because I, I went on, I went on. Oh no, 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 you're right. It, that so yeah, it was me doing. It was me doing the uh, the two songs, and then and then going on yeah. after for Will. Okay, so yeah, sorry, yeah, I'm just remembering and, the sequence. So and and by Will we mean Will, Will Harris. Yeah, from from England, the, the 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 Brit that almost died on the hill and then came on stage and decided to to just ad lib songs. Yeah, well, that's well, that's you know, yeah, that's the funny thing is it's it seemed it seemed like that that Brian and Justin just brought Will up and were like, hey, come on up, man, and then and then Will kind of like was like, hey guys, why don't we? Why don't we just like like that's that seemed to be how how it worked out? Is that correct? Because the thing is like yeah, I like I like like he just kind of a steamroll. Right, so so I don't and I don't I don't want to out. This is definitely a story that's going to be told on Night Attack. I am one hundred percent certain. <laughs> there there is a lot there's a lot of backstory that I don't feel comfortable re- revealing without the permission of of Justin and Brian and Will. But the thing is, is but there was. But but will uh, let me just say that will's uh, will's uh, intoxication was ultra amplified by that point in time, you know, and so so he was he was literally uh, like 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 his whatever whatever tape he has the the, the record stuff that was going on that was gone, you know. Uh, so uh, like he didn't remember the next day. He didn't remember coming up with any of that stuff. So the fact that he was coming up with totally decent rhymes that were actually kind of on point to like what was going on at that moment. I'm like, I, I, I'm like, that's amazing, man. Like that's amazing when he's like, you know, that, that was, that was mind blowing to me is that the dude could barely stay. Like there were times when everybody in the audience thought he was going down. Like, like, like as soon as he, he was on going stage. down, yeah, but yet he's, he's coming up with these verses that are actually rhyming. They're, kind of for the most part on time <laughs> and they made sense and i'm just yeah, standing yes. there going or sitting there going how he can't stand but yet he can do this yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, it, was, and, it, was, and, and, it was amazing and who would have known we would have had had a song about chicken nuggets uh, at the end of the yeah, night you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, and get everybody involved with it that was the best thing he said it was damn catchy <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. Oh man, and and it wasn't it wasn't a, it wasn't a night attack show in uh, in in its normal form. It was kind of just them up there goofing off, but it was so worth the wait, and it just capped off that first night very very well. And man, it was it was hilarious. I was laughing my ass off. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it, it was it was so much fun, and, and you know, like I I was just I was just thrilled that I managed to get like like that 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 anything I did did not derail it because I'm like I'm like thank you Will for being the distraction. I'm just gonna do I, I don't I'm I don't gonna do G, I, I, GCA I, or whatever it was. You know. I don't know that the <laughs> I don't know that the uh, the yeah. the train was on rails when it started. So <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 we were definitely we were definitely in the weeds as we began. You know like hey. if anything Mike you you were there pushing the the cars back onto the track as they came violently off <laughs> yeah was, that's that's what that's very funny like like that's i uh, somebody because i go oh, yeah because I, I was I, I was doing i believe it was d and it was g and d and c in some in some form or another uh which is like you know which it's like one four five it, it's like super simple but uh, but fortunately because i was super i'm like i'm like just play it in time mike and just get it right <laughs> uh i was like i was like yeah that, like i think mike saved the whole the whole will song and i'm like really that's hey, that's nice that's great i i was just trying to make sure i didn't did completely embarrass myself in front of 400 people <laughs> Oh yeah, and I I thought it was funny because when the jury show started, um, Kim and Scott were off to the side watching with a bunch of other people, and, yeah. and and as soon as that first story was being told, I look over it and they weren't there anymore. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, okay, we've had enough. We're out of here. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, so that was the first night, and of course afterwards we all went out and uh, drank some more. Right? Uh, I didn't. I couldn't. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all it's all one boozy, runny kind of memory now. Uh, so that was Friday. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. That's yeah. We we did. We all we all of us went, and then and then. No, no, because that was Thursday. Okay, so we what did we do? The, that, that was Friday. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm 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 misremembering. Oh, you... I, I was I was about to tell a story, but it was actually a Thursday story. Um, uh, so Friday. I don't remember. I don't even know. 
Oh no, that's right. No, actually, actually, I I, I kind of crashed out a little bit early because I I mean I mean like one o'clock early. So I we, I was hanging out, but but I I went to check in on Will and just make sure he was okay and he was collapsed. Like he was like passed out, and then I was like, all right, he's he's passed out. I'll crash out too, because. <laughs> Cause that was, that was, it was, it was the end of the second day of drinking from, you know, early in the day. And I'm like, yeah, this has got to stop. Yeah. That I, <laughs> I, I went to, well, my daughter's, uh, between the jury show and the night attack show, they had like during your song, when you were doing your, uh, I want to kill my neighbor's dog, uh, one daughter had gone to the bathroom and when she came back, she was like, I'm not feeling well. So they have both gone up to the room. So by the time I got done with the night attack show, I went upstairs to check on them and I was like, okay, well, since I'm here, I might as well just go and get my shower and go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I, get, I get told it's that part of the night. That's um, that's how you know that's how that's how you distinguish the adults from the kids is when is when you actually get somewhere you're like, should I sleep? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna sleep. <laughs> like that's like I never I never would have done that until it's really only now in this very year. This in fact this weekend did I decide. You know what? I'm not gonna go out. Although although I still have enough kid me because on sun on Saturday going into Sunday I was out till five thirty in the morning. So uh, yeah yeah I heard about that. <laughs> I, I I heard all about that up there. Yeah. Uh, in, in the uh, the the speakeasy, shall we say? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and that was that was pretty embarrassing. I mean, yeah, I mean it was fun. It was awesome, but so I was definitely the second day was uh, was film sack. I didn't watch that. I didn't go. I didn't make it up in time. I got up and ate some cereal and decided I was just gonna sit there and check Twitter for about three hours. Um, yeah, and it was it was pretty awesome. The, like they they actually were talking about a, a whole bunch of stuff, but um, um, then they were they were they were they were tearing they were they were basically uh uh kind of drilling into what was the, it, it, it was a black exploitation film. Um, and I'm forgetting the name right now. It's like, it's like first samurai or, Oh, first or no, 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 no. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't black, black exploitation. It was a little bit of black exploitation, a little bit of Asian exploitation. <laughs> um, and it was like, uh, what was it called? And it's the dragon return of the dragon. Something not, no, it's a uh, something dragon. Somebody would know. It was like the first dragon or the, the last dragon. Barry Gordon's yeah. Yeah. Last the last dragon. dragon. There you go. The last dragon. Yeah. And that so and that was and that was a lot of fun. It, it was it was really it was really it's so crazy. How is it? How is it that Scott? How is it that Scott can, can that does this? You, you know, and then and then is so terrible with the with the movies. What you know in the in the in the uh, in the uh, Frog's Pants All Stars. I'm like that's so crazy, man. Like. Like, because he's he's got like this this really um, sort of like. Well, to uh, to be fair, he he did have Garrett Weinzerl, who does a Star Wars podcast, not able to provide a Star Wars clue on the most recent Star Wars movie. Well, so but I, it's 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 funny because because he because he, he did explain he was he was like I don't know what Scott's gonna know, so I'm trying. He was trying to find an answer that he thought that he thought Scott would get because he was afraid that like you know because because he. He did the night before. The night before, we were all hanging out, and and uh, and Brian Brian challenged him to name, uh, to name uh, oh to name eight characters from Rogue One, and he got it like like without even without even like blinking. He's like right. this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, you know. So he definitely knows his Star Wars stuff. But uh, I think like he was looking at it through the lens of what like what might work and what might not work with with Scott. <laughs> yeah, it, it, he ended up not giving out any clues at all. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> and people were like, and people were like, you do a you do a Star Wars <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, so, uh, Jerry Fax, did, did you did you make it to anything on Sunday? Like, what what or Saturday? What events did you make it on Saturday? <clears throat> um, Sunday involved uh, getting up, or Sunday Saturday involved getting up. Um, uh, what's the schedule? I made it to. The All Stars <laughs> at three thirty in the afternoon. Three thirty in the afternoon, you made it. You made it to the All Stars Championship. <laughs> so I, I, I think I got up at like noon or something like that. A whole bunch of us um, uh, went up uh, to the top of the mountain. Yep. Uh, um, had lunch up there. Uh, took Curly with us. It was great having him along. Uh, love you, Curly. Um, and uh, <laughs> we, uh, we hiked down a little bit. Um, which was, it was, that was, man, was that an experience hiking down that mountain? 
Mm. I'm not doing that again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was. Uh, I I I was like I was in my Converse All Stars, which have no traction on even you know on 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 the most tractiony of of materials, and so going through the snow. I was in constant fear of of falling, but the thing is, is like, but then also, they, which was great about the snow, it was the, they had like it was melting, so there were like little micro, like little rivulets underneath. So you'd step on something, and your foot would sink about would a, just... a half foot, <laughs> yeah, into into ice, like freezing cold water. Of which the only thing protecting me from the freezing cold is canvas, and so <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna experience uh, frostbite. I'm gonna experience frostbite. In, on this mountain in, July. in the middle of not in the middle of July, but in the very beginning of July, we are we are we are literally weeks into summer, and I'm gonna get frostbite, and I don't know how I'm gonna explain this away. That's, that's... It, being up there was the most <laughs> odd sensation I've ever felt because like the the sun is coming down on you and it's hot, but it's cold, like it, it the wind and the snow and everything. You're it's cold, but. I was hot and sweating and I was, my body was just so confused. It really was like, I didn't understand what was happening. I've never been that at, at that altitude before. <laughs> and I won't ever again. Uh, <laughs> I've done it once. <laughs> I, my, I didn't make it up there and no, none of, nobody in my party made it up there. You know, so Amber and Ashley didn't make it up there. Kent didn't make it up there. Um, but me and Amber, while, at one point we were looking for, for like to, to grab signatures, you know, on, on Saturday afternoon, um, I'm not sure exactly what time it was probably, I guess it was probably after, after everything wrapped up, but we went down to the tram club and browsed around there to see if we could catch anybody. And then instead of walking back, of course I was on, I, was, I think it was in my brace that day, um, for my knee, <clears throat> instead of walking back, we took the, the chairlift back. Oh, cool. We, we realized as soon as it took off that both of us are afraid of heights. Both of us have, oh. have anxiety when it comes to like being stuck <coughs> oh, in no. places. <laughs> So essentially, so so essentially, her and I were each other's Xanax, going up, going all the way up the hill, like talking to each other constantly. Like we didn't shut, neither one of us shut up at all the entire way up there until we finally got off there. And I looked at her and I said, "We are never doing that again." And she said, <laughs> "No, Dad, we are not." <laughs> it was the, it was the most nerve wracking thing that entire trip. Uh, oh my gosh, that that three minutes or whatever that that it took to get up there. It seemed like for, it seemed like the whole day just melted away, and all I knew was that we were stuck on this tram with or this uh, this this ski lift with no seat belt, nothing to hold on to. Uh, and, and of course, like as soon as we get on there, she's nervous, so she's talking with her hands. So it's swinging back and forth. And there's like nothing <laughs> stopping you from just whoop, falling off. I was like, oh my god, no, no, no! I had my hand wrapped up underneath the rail on the side and the rail over here. You know, it, that was that, that was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Yeah, man, that's uh, well. Then don't. Then I, I then I highly recommend don't try snow skiing. No, no, never. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> if, if if my bad knees hadn't already eliminated that, that chairlift sure, certainly did because it's not a yeah, chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Time Jumper says it's, it's the bunny hill ski lift. Yeah, so yeah, basically what you need to do is you need to grab those. You need to find those ones that like are the ones you just hold on to and they pull you up the they pull you up the hill. You know, <laughs> like it's fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or or just take pop a whole bunch of Xanax on the way up there because there's no way. Um, yeah. Oh no, uh, Crunchy says at least Crunchy says at least you you went without someone who insists on rocking it to scare you. Uh, they <laughs> they would have ended up at the bottom because I would have punched them. Uh, that's end of story. That's that's how that would have gone because I was that it was literally you know, flight or fright or flight fright whatever. Yeah. F- f- I, I was flight. I was holding on, I was holding on hard enough that my hands were sore for the rest of the evening. Like that's how wow. I, it was wow. terrifying, absolutely terrifying. And I know that's just my own personal flaw, but that's what this show's about. So, um, they did the uh, the the costume contest. Did you guys see that? I didn't because because I- uh, Ashley, uh, she's like, let's go get drinks. And so we no 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 that was we did that before that we actually we were actually doing dinner. Um, so yeah, we missed we 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 yeah we missed it all. Sucks. Yeah, I I missed it too. I was out exploring the uh, 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 the mountain coaster and the mm. how was how was that thing. Yeah, how were those? Did you do both of those? Yeah, I uh, I I streamed the one of the mountain coaster. Got in trouble for that. Uh, oh, no. 
And what? it was it's it's a unique experience because you're in like this little tiny metal one to two person car and the only way to stop are hand brakes. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> you're going around these curves and up and down and big spirals, man. It was it was so it was scary. So like, you, I mean, you're saying the mountain coaster was your ski lift. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I could use my hands after I got <laughs> off of it, <laughs> but it was, it, it threw me for a loop. The couple, the first couple curves, because you, you, you hold down to go and like you pull back to stop and oh, wow. they were just like, just, just hold it down and you'll go. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well I get going around these curves and I still have it down. And I didn't realize like you actually have to pull back to slow down and that's like You're the like, first why is it not curves slowing? I was just like just I'm falling off down. <laughs> Cause it, it throws you you're held on by like a single strap belt and I'm just like this no this is death in a can like <laughs> yeah that's that's the one thing that, that, that I was really wondering is like there there has to be injuries right there have to be injuries on that thing I'm just wondering how often they occur and how bad the injuries are there's no way watching those people losing around like, like doing that thing around like like there's no way that 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 they, this is just injury free. It's like it's got to be some like law of like diminishing return. Like they're like oh we're making enough money we'll deal with it later on you know. <laughs> well they they had like these big uh, uh, chain link uh, uh, stops and like fences at all of the different uh, curves and all that stuff. There were hats, wallets, phones, all sorts of stuff in these things. And I, I'm just like how and of course I'm going with holding my phone like trying to hold it with one hand but. I'm just like, I, it, somebody at somewhere has had to come out of one of those things, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> you, you have to assume so, right? I mean, yeah, maybe, I, maybe it's a little less dangerous than skiing. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. I, I don't even know how dangerous skiing is. I just know I couldn't get to the top. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, so the the whole show up, wrapped up after the costume thing. I, I watched it. I, I was it, it was fairly interesting. Um, some people put a lot more effort into their costumes than others did. Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, there, I mean, there were some, there were a handful of people that that actually were like professional, you know, costume yeah. people, you know, like. So the thing is, like, so that, so that, I was like, all right, well, that's obviously on on a, on a level. Like, it's, I think it was, I think it made sense that they didn't do a costume contest and instead was a pageant because, right. like, you know, that's like. I mean, there there were some people that, that I was like, wow. Yeah. Like I just just watching him watching him walk around. I'm like, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. Um, yeah, that did. Um, Viking last Viking. did uh, did an impression uh, of Schwood. Went out there doing the whole scam school shoot thing, and then went up to the, to the front and like threw cards in the air. And it was funny because you could tell a lot of people weren't paying attention to anyone after them because then they'd go out back across the stage and like, where did all these cards come from? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the, the the lady two people behind you threw them in the air like as you were walking off stage. I okay, um, it, it, that that was fun. I thought that was pretty pretty hilarious. And then she basically tried to keep up that moniker like the rest of the night. Like she was even signing stuff as Schwood, not really. And like it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's uh, in fact she, she made it. She made their way. Or she made her way up to the the airy bar area. Um, and then that became I, I, that became a, a, a ridiculous. Did you get? Did you catch any of that? The mm -hmm. the, the the fake gamer girl stream. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that's and that's I I, I well anyway I, the thing is like is like I'm not 100 percent certain how much of this the the, the night attack guys want to but I'll I'll regale. Um, and if they and if I'm if I'm telling you know stories before they should be told then you know then you can fire me or something. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so, they, they, so they they can give you back your theme song right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she, so, so, you know, so, uh, Viking lass heads upstairs, um, as, as, uh, you know, as Schwood. And, uh, and so, and so, and we, so at this, by this point in time, it, uh, so Ashley, a, a, via her fake gamer girl handle has been, is twitching, uh, I mean, is, is streaming live on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, 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 and she has now gone off and it's, I think she's actually having a conversation with Time Jumper. Because he was he was he was time jump time jump was right there so 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 I think Ashley and and, and time jump are having a conversation if I if I remember correctly so Ashley's like all right well then here and it was me and Brian um uh from uh, <laughs> yes. 
it, sorry, I it was, just realized it was, what this it was, was. It was, it was yes. Yeah, so it was it was it was it was Schwid. <laughs> Schwid was right here, but it was no, it was but it was uh, Brian from uh, uh, Props, Punish, punishing punishing props or. Punish, punish props. Uh, uh, and so, and so we're, so we're just kind of being ridiculous and just saying, and then, and then, and then Brian, and then, and then Schwood comes in and he starts ordering some food. So, and, and it's just, it's just, and we're literally like shit faced and it's just ridiculous, ridiculous silliness. And then, and then, and then, uh, Viking Lash shows up as Schwood and, and she starts interacting with everybody. And then Tom Merritt joins up and Tom Merritt's like, Hey, I'm Justin Robert Young. And they start doing a you know, a, 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 you know, like they're, they're like, they're like send up of, of the night attack guys. And then fake gamer gets, gets girl gets involved. And so she starts inter like she starts holding the camera and introducing everybody. And so she comes to me and she's like, Hey, this is Bonnie. And so I'm like, Oh, hi. And then, and then, uh, and then she goes to Brian. She's like, this is Penny. And so, and, and so everybody, so anyway, so everybody's playing all of these alternate roles and it just becomes it becomes a complete. I I got to the point where I couldn't. I ha, I'm like I'm like we have to stop making jokes. Yeah. And then Ashley. And then. <laughs> all right. So so uh, so then so then somebody decides that Brian is is gonna re, is gonna play Ashley. Anyway, you gotta watch it because it's ridiculous <laughs> and it's out of control funny. And then ultimately it ends up with Ashley playing Doctor Bird. And which was like, yeah, which was just the most perfect ending. It was, it's just, it's crazy. It's nutty. And uh, you should definitely, yes. I, yeah, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> Meat is murder. <laughs> oh God. So you got it. Yeah. So I, I, so I, I'm certain, I'm certain that it's still available on, on fake gamer girls, uh, on page. You have to go find, you have to go check it out. I'm, I'm certain somebody's probably already captured it, but, but it's, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just, it's just, it was sheer drunken chaos of awesome. So. And that that pretty much sums up nerdtacular right there. Like, yeah, just, there there was something awesome going on everywhere you turned. Like if you went to the game room, there was never not a game playing that you could yeah. just join. Oh in. yeah, like it, 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 you'd be like you'd sit there and watch me. But somebody would be like, okay, well, um, do you think you got it? Okay, well I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the next panel. You, you want to take my my turn? And then they would just sit down. And that other person would get up and just go do whatever, go to the dinner, or whatever. Come back a while later and start playing someone else's turn. You know, it, it was just it was. The whole weekend was just amazing. If you couldn't be there, all this stuff is available somewhere on the interwebs, probably on frogpants.tv uh, or frogpants.com slash live, somewhere like that. Um, and we just got a Twitch video in there from uh, from Jotmon. So that's probably the uh, the, the video, the aforementioned uh, Twitch video. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's... Just, the, the whole goddamn thing was just a good time. So yeah. I, it, hopefully we do it again. Hopefully Scott does it again. I... I might have got an indication from somebody that I spoke to after the event that it might be. I might have got a couple indi indications from a couple people that there might be another one uh, in a year or two. Oh, uh, cool! But nothing official and nothing I can put on record. So hopefully, yeah. hoping against hope, there's another one in uh, even if it is in Salt Lake City. And uh, you know, Snowbird was great. Those are the great people. Uh, Mike, you testify that. Uh, the, the the snowbird crew is great because well they they give you guys a speakeasy on after everything shut down on Saturday. Oh night. yeah, <laughs> that yeah that I mean I will I mean that that that, that was amazing. So um, so War Crusher War Crusher um, w w apparently since the very inception of like since he first arrived, they were having parties in in his room to the tune of like twenty to thirty people in one room, mm -hmm. just like you know so so um. So eventually, eventually the complaints got to be so much that, that the, you know, that security showed up and we're like, we need to eject you guys, but we have a employee lounge that we're willing to give, give you to actually move your party to. So, uh, <laughs> so they, so yeah, so the thing is like, so, so apparently, so then they all, they all migrated down to the, to this, to this other place. And so, um, yeah. And, uh, so apparently, so I, so I got there, I got there literally like right after all of this happens, but apparently the, the security had loaded so many people into, into one elevator that it dropped three floors. They got, they, they, they were over, they were over weight capacity and it dropped three. So, so then, no, but dig this. So oh, then Jesus. security, security takes the, the security footage 
and they just loop that little section where it's oh it's right before they drop oh they drop and then there's the end and they, they're playing that for anybody that wanders into the security office to check it out so as so i'm with edgymon and as we're pulling up you know as we're pulling up they're like hey do you want to see the video and i'm like we're like what video and they're like come check it out come check it out three floors something something i i still am not making any heads or tails out of what's being said and i see this video and there's and there's it's this it's this completely packed uh 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 the elevator car and I, you just see everybody go oh, and like and people start like clutching each other and I'm like what's going on with that and then you know and it turns out you know oh that's because it just dropped three floors three <laughs> floors I is, would lose is that my loop mind. that's like 15 that's anywhere. 20 feet what was that is, is that loop available anywhere did somebody <laughs> capture that on their phone you know, or anything? I don't know you're totally right I I <laughs> wonder if anybody thought to ask for that oh no somebody did uh, somebody, one of the, one of the people that in the group that when we saw the video was like, can I get a copy of that? And the, and the security guy was no, <laughs> like, you know, cause it's, they're asking a lot, yeah. you know, like they're, you know, so they're like, no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So there, there's, there's one person we haven't mentioned this entire time who was there from, from get, from the very get go working most of the convention, most of the time that he was out there, he was doing some sort of job, either at Nertacular or away from Nertacular because Brian Brushwood is a slave driver. And <laughs> he was constantly just getting things done. When yeah. he had a moment to relax, this, this right here is what, <clears throat> uh, let me, let me get the right, the right scene here. <laughs> this is what good old Brycast did. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to turn the uh, audio on on it. <laughs> it it's oh, uh, that horse has, has has obviously been running for for quite some time because there's a sheen of sweat on that on that guy that's just <laughs> is, you know is he is he shushing it is is he <laughs> <laughs> so we're we're hiking down the mountain on Saturday and. The, the the tunnel to get from one side to the other. First of all, that is really cool how I'm in the middle of a mountain and I know I've driven through tunnels, but walking through one is just a totally different experience. But um, th there's a random ass horse in the middle of this tunnel. <laughs> he, go he just he goes up to it and just starts <laughs> just palming down this thing. <laughs> I lost it. It was great. Holy crap! And uh, w one more thing, uh, uh, oh, uh, Tom. Uh, if you were at Nertacular, you had to have noticed a game going on—a a game that very few people were part of, but everybody saw. Uh, would, would you? Uh, uh, so, would, would, you, would you care to explain uh, this right here? So, I am squishing uh, April slash Viking Glass's head. Um, it's a game that we've been doing now for a few years at any conventions that we're both at or any gatherings or anything. Um, it started back at uh, Dragon Con or something like that a few years ago. And the whole idea of the game is to squish, <laughs> squish the other person's head <laughs> through your camera. Boys in the hall style. Yeah. Yeah. And tweak them but run away before you tweet them. That way they can't turn around and find you. So <laughs> uh, whenever I realized or where she was, I was going up to her and like, Ooh, that's a good one. That is from, oh, sorry. I'm pointing at my screen. as. It... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, by all uh, means, tell, tell, tell us the whole story. <laughs> two doors, mind you. Uh, I pulled one open because she had a lookout, which is not fair. That's not part of the rules, but <laughs> Uh, she had a, she had this lookout that was like telling her anytime I was around it sucked, um, but I was uh, squishing her, um, squishing her head. That was my most uh, um, uh, genius one. Uh, I squished a Viking lass, even though it's not her. So she, I don't have a T-shirt with my name on it, so I win that one automatically. Um, that one was on Saturday. Uh, I had walked down to meet everybody to go down to the top of the mountain. And I saw her uh, and uh, Bill, and uh, I can't remember who else was with her, but 
they were walking up and that was on like 10 times zoom. That's how far away I was. Wow. Uh, that was at dinner at uh, breakfast shortly after that was on at the way <laughs> to go up to the mountain. Um, so, and then still you, more <laughs> at the, <laughs> there's, there's one in there. Let me know whenever you get to it where, uh, that okay, that was obviously a setup one, but that was fun. We both took pictures of each other squeezing. That was fun. Um, keep going. Um, keep going. It should be right after this one. There it is. <laughs> so she turned around and caught me. <laughs> um, anytime that you get caught, uh, the other person uh, flips you off, and you still have to post it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> So it's kind of like a negative point system, but it's it, it works. But uh, yeah. Oh oh, Sunbun has has a uh, some of hers. She got some. Damn it, she got some good ones on me, man. Um, wait, three ten seventeen. What? Oh my god, that's from a. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, wow. Sorry. I got distracted there. Apparently, uh, I don't even remember this. I went through and, uh, did a, I'm not even going to try to explain that. It's a thing. It look at my Twitter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she, she got some, sorry. It's a, hor it's a horrible thing. Uh, but she got some really good ones of me that I had no idea about. Um, Oh, Sunbun's posting the ones from, uh, Dragon Con a couple of years ago yeah. that now, she you, got me with. So do the two of you keep score? Like, do you know the running tally of who's ahead, who's behind? I'm always winning. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know how well that speaks for you. <laughs> so, so you're a better I, I got away. I got away yeah. with one. Oh, uh, are you, are you saying you pull up the thing about the rock that she posted earlier today? Are you saying you're um, a better stalker than she is? Is that what's going on? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm 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 a much better creep. Um, <laughs> uh, she was. It was. This was on our way up to dinner uh, Saturday night. Um, there was those rocks down there by that foyer by the uh, um, by the restaurant downstairs, and she kept looking at them and kept picking them up. And she's like, "Oh, I really want one." And she then she would put it back, be like, "Oh, but they're really cool," and then pick it up and be like, "No, I can't steal it. Put it back." Right. Oh, so you're talking about the white, I, the polished white rocks down there. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. Um, ah, she, uh, Sunbun just posted it in the chat. Um, uh, she went through and uh, picked one up one last time before we went to dinner and put it back down. She's like, "No, no, no, I can't, I can't, I can't do it, I can't do it." So I went through, picked one up, and as we're walking up, I slid it into her backpack, and she turned oh, around and looked awesome. at me, and I held my phone up really fast. Which, if I was thinking about it, I would have taken a picture of me like doing that with the rock. Oh God, that'd be yeah. genius. But anyway, uh, we were walking up, and she turned around, and looks at me, and she goes, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Oh man, you got me." Uh, but what is this? Almost uh, four, or four or five days after I put that in her bag, she finally found it. <laughs> that's awesome! Awesome. Holy crap! So that that's that's uh that that's a uh, nertacular as a as a as a as, a, as an event. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's mountains, uh, songs, and rocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, final words on uh, on nertacular, Mike. Um, I highly if if you have not yet got had a chance to go, and if they if they do, God willing, have another one. Um, when the moment they announce it, I highly recommend, cause the thing is, is it like, uh, there's no way I would have been able to go. Had, had it not been for the largesse of, of, um, it was, uh, it was, uh, Will Harris was, was the guy that he was like, I got an extra bed. You can stay with me. Um, uh, you know, jury, uh, and he was like, he was like, we got a guest pat. We got a guest pass. Like, like there were, there were a lot of things that lined up that allowed me to go, um, that, that had they not happened, I would not have gone. Um, I thank my lucky stars that that I did get a chance to go because it was awesome. And so if you if you if you if you're able to make the plans, you know, um, like certainly you you have like it's just it is just so so much fun. Um, and then you know and then and literally it's like every like like 
every person, I'm like, Hey, you're my people. You're my people. Like, you know, just like, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, like there's, yeah, it was just, it was great. It was like, you, I could walk up to any, like anybody waiting for the elevator. Oh, strike up a 20 minute conversation <laughs> Four elevators go by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just super fun. Uh, that, that right there is my favorite thing that I, out of everything that I love the most of Nerdtacular is that it's, it's so intimate and everybody is so damn approachable. You know what I mean? Like, it's not spread out across an entire city and three hotels and all this other stuff. It's basically one hotel, two different rooms, maybe, you know, and then everybody is running back and forth and you run into so many different people. That, yeah. that was the coolest experience out of all of it for it, me was if that, you were, that part. If you were ever bored, just go to an elevator because you were going to yeah. run <laughs> yes. into somebody who could talk to, to it with. I mean, my daughter's my daughter's 17 and 15. Never caught a Diamond Club show. They don't even watch my own show because they're afraid I'm talking about them or something. They <laughs> they don't watch Frog Pants stuff, and they went there and they had a blast. And they awesome. they talked to all these people. And my I told uh, I told Ashley she's got a little bit of anxiety, and I told her just ask somebody what they thought of an episode of Rick and Morty. And sure as shit, like the day one, she's like, oh my god, I talked to so many people about Rick and Morty today. You know, <laughs> you know if, if you geek out about something, you can show up in your tacular, start talking about it, and you're going to gather a crowd of people that also want to talk about it with somebody, you know? Um, and just really, I mean, I, I felt safe letting my 17 and 15 year old daughters kind of wander around the hotel. They could be in the game room. They could go back up and get lunch in, the, in our room. They could go to, you know, one of the, 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 the events that I didn't go to or whatever. And it was really just a family-friendly environment, and it was it was awesome. And I I really appreciate Scott Johnson for putting it on. Uh, Corinne, I don't know her last name, but Corinne is actually the one, woman that runs the whole thing, and she was spectacular. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, of course all the attendees and everybody else, uh, it was just just awesome. And a very special thank you again to Joe Mon for taking the video that we that we did on uh, at the meet and greet. And putting that up on YouTube, um, we will make sure that gets in the show, show notes and stuff like that because he did all he did that. He actually put a, put an episode together with the fucking live stream that we did from the roof. Uh, oh, awesome! <laughs> so um, episode one thirty two and a half, I believe it is. And uh, yeah, just just a great time. And if you haven't had a chance to go, if you want to know what's about the all the all the events are streamed online. You, you got to make it. If there's going to be another one, you got to make it. And I gotta say, this is really changed how i feel about south by like why are we not doing more as a community it's amen by? amen like, well i mean that, that was my first introduction to 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 the diamond club community as actual individuals was was south by and it was and it was that and that was so much fun and the people with that i met there um, like it was just always nice to like when I ran across our ha handle online to put it like, like to like in my mind's eye to see them and be like, Oh yeah. Like I could just add it at an, an extra level of like connection. And so that was like my big motivator. I was like, I was like, you know what? Like, like the going to South by was amazing, but I'll be, but being there for f like four or five days with all those people, I'm certain it's going to be, it's going to be awesome. And, and it was, it was, it was, it, you know, it, yeah. Hands down the best, the best convention experience I've ever had. So it was a ton of fun. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Um, it's that time where uh, we're asked where you where you can be found on the old interwebs. Uh, we'll start with you, Tom. Um, at Jerry Fax. Um, that's the easiest, most uh, simplest way to find me. So hit me up. And uh, did you did you uh, did you sticker Snowbird? <sighs> okay. So <laughs> hashtag Make America Sticker Again. Mm -hmm. Made made its was, uh, was was hashtag forgotten in the plane ride travel over there. <laughs> no, trust me, I had the stickers in my bag. I had them separated, organized. Man, I was gonna light that shit up. But I once I realized that everything was like their property, mm. Mm. <laughs> I di I didn't feel comfortable, especially with it being Scott's thing. Mm. Like I didn't want to go in and be the guy that's throwing diamond club stickers everywhere all over the hotel. Um, you know, before, you know, other events and stuff, I easily throw up what a hundred stickers yeah. Yeah. across the city and all that stuff, which is fine and dandy because they have Saran wrap and all this other stuff around the poles, you know, it gets tore down. Haha. -ha, right. Well, I, this is a hotel. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't want, you know, to put stickers in their bathrooms and ski lifts and are, trams are they, and are they is it are they pretty expensive these stickers? Um I they're all Diamond Club oriented things like I get I get some from a uh, jury. I have a bunch of Schwood ones. Um, it, it's not so much yeah. that they're expensive or anything. It's just, I didn't, I didn't want to well, deface. No, that that's what I was thinking is like, cause what you could, what you could do is you could, you could, you could either do it just by yourself or you could hand them off to other people, but you could just walk up to people and be like, Hey man, how you doing? You know, and just, <laughs> and just apply them on the backs of shirts all across, like just, just like start hitting everybody up and seeing how many you could, people you could just get walking around with diamond club like, stickers on their backs. Where was this idea six yeah. days ago? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, six days that late, Mike. Genius. Six days late. Um, I, yeah. I I can't say that I didn't throw some still in beta stickers on a few things that I noticed that weren't operating quite properly. <laughs> like they had one of the toilets was out, so that toilet is uh, still in, hashtag still in beta. Um, oh, that's funny. Because <laughs> uh, that's great. That's awesome. So th there's there's a few of them out there uh, around around the hotel, but I, I didn't uh, I didn't plaster them everywhere mostly because I forgot it because I was just having a good time. Um, Mike, uh, how about you? Where can people find more about you and uh, what you're doing and the grooves that you're making and all that stuff? Yeah, uh, well, my my whole my newest biggest thing, in addition to to working on putting out, I'm putting three albums out this year, so um, those will be coming out uh, like over the next handful of months. The next one will be next month, and then and there'll be another one in in the early fall and another one in in late winter. Um, but um, but I, I you know I, obviously I've been doing the Twitch thing, Mike TV Live. Um, and I'm adding a new show. So I realize I can't, I, cause I sing for pretty much four hours every show by the end of the week, my voice is shot, but I still want to like maintain some sort of presence and I want to do it at least five days a week. So I'm doing a show called 15 listens where over the course of the week I find an album and I just listen to it 15 times. I take notes and, um, and basically what the idea is, is that like when the show happens, I'm going to unpack that album. I'm going to talk about like on first listen, these songs really jumped out at me. By this listen, the you know like, like it just kind of explain, like kind of like show how the evolution of my fa of of my appreciation of an album kind of evolved, um, and then and then uh, I'm gonna unpack the record. So I'm gonna look at like, hey, these are the song, these are the keys the songs are in, these are the lyrics. This is kind of how all this stuff integrates, and just kind of like, you know, really by the by the end of the show, the idea would be that anybody paying anybody watching it would be we could walk away sort of an expert on on that music. So anyway. So that's the newest, the newest project in, in the, in the, in, in, in the pipeline. In, in Mike TV land. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mike, a quick question on, on that project because yeah, I, I noticed myself listening to albums that I find and I always start with like that one song, you know, you know, whether it be, you know, I listen to an album, but then I go to this song or whatever. And, and yeah. what, like, what are the, the, the amounts of times that you listen to something before something else catches you like i, I well, guess my it, my question is like you, you have a song that pops out first but the second yeah. one that second or third one does it catch you with its lyrics does it catch you with its you know depth or well that, it's funny you should say that because because that was so so for me for me it, 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 it every every song and every album is going to be different but um but but way back in 1992 um, I was, I was going between LA and, and Palm Springs back and forth as a two hour drive each way without traffic. Um, and I had a bunch of cassettes and I was sick of them. I'd just been listening to them nonstop and I had one cassette that I couldn't stand and, and I'd pop it in and I listened for half a song and be like, this is terrible. And I'd throw it in the back. But eventually every time I popped it in, cause I was just sick of all my other, my other, my other cassettes. I popped it in and I'm like, you know, this first song is pretty cool, but the rest are terrible, you know? And then, and then but I would pop it in and be like, oh, I really like this first song. And you know, the second song is pretty cool, but the rest are terrible. And by the time I got to the third song, being like, this is a pretty cool tune. I'm like, you know what? I need to spend more time with this record. And so it was that, it was that whole process that, that real, that I realized, you know, like maybe if I just spend time, even if, even if my ears can't hear it, and even if it's driving me insane, if I just give it a little bit, a little bit of time, it might, cause that, that was pavements, that album was pavement slanted, slanted and enchanted. And that literally transformed the way I, I looked at music from that point on. Um, but it was just so wildly different than what my ears have been trained to hear. I just couldn't hear it, you know? And so I just, I needed to like acclimate to it. So, so the thing is, is like, so yeah, so, so, so now, now when I, when, if somebody does a song that I like and I'm like, this is a great song. I, I'm, I'm willing to give anything else that they've done enough. Sh I'm willing to give it five or six spins 
before I, before I walk away, you know, because the thing is, is it like, because everybody evolves and maybe their evolution w was so pronounced and so, so dramatic that I wasn't, you know, I, I didn't evolve alongside them. And, you know, so anyway, so yeah, I spent a lot of, I, this is basically when I'm not making music. This is what I spend my days thinking about. So <laughs> I could, I could just go on and on and on and on. <laughs> and, and, uh, real quick. I, I'm so sorry, dude. Uh, waffles. That's yeah. a really good question. Do you go by track order the way they intended you to listen to it, or do you throw it on shuffle just to get a different vibe? I can give you so 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 that I can tell so so for me because because most artists that make full length records they make them to be listened to as full length records, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, is like a lot of thought goes into sequencing, a lot of thought goes into um, the narrative of the entire album. You know, this song comes this song comes after this song because this idea was postulated and this idea is kind of paying it off. So I always listen to it, and not that I'm the, I'm doing it the only the right way, but I always listen to it in sequence, and I always listen to the entire album. I I, I never like I don't I don't jump around. However, however, after, eventually I get to a point where the, I'm kind of burnt uh, burning out on the record, and then I will and then I'll put it on shuffle, and it bre it breathes new life into the album because because my ears are expecting to hear something, you know. It's like it's like seeing it's like hearing a, a song that you love live. You know, it's like it's like it's just always going to be a little bit different from the recorded thing, and so that newness just makes it sparkle. And so, so that's what I do. When whenever whenever an album is kind of losing its allure, I can get another six months of listening out of it just by throwing on shuffle. You know, I, so I, I was actually uh, going to mention that because a lot of times when you're when you're used to this, like um, I, when we were talking in the lobby, we were talking about this actual idea and this whole process. Yeah. Um, and I, I told you the uh, w one of my favorite albums. Um, is uh, Mad Season by Matchbox 20. It's one that mm -hmm. it, it just encapsulates so much emotion when I'm listening to it from different parts of my life. And it's evolved. The album has evolved with my emotions as I've, you know, over the last 15 years as I've, as I've gotten older and been through different things, you know, divorced, remarried, all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that I, I figured out on that album that I hadn't really paid attention to before is that if I put that one on random, I know what emotion I'm expecting that next next song to have because yeah. it, it's suddenly empty. And I realized, oh, this isn't being paid off because that song isn't playing right now. This other song is. And at that point, I can finally say, oh, this is the emotion that I'm wrapped up into that song with that I was expecting. Oh. You know, because oh. you, you listen to song A and you're like, okay, this is it. And then song B is supposed to start and you start ramping up into that, into that state of mind and it's not there. And now you realize because you're not getting a payoff. You're not getting the song that you expected. And it's like so oh. yeah so so it's it's like watching it's like watching a favorite movie out of sequence it's like the narrative that the, the emotional narrative for you is no longer there mm -hmm. exactly. is that what, is that what you're saying exactly exactly it, yeah it, it changes you know it, it allows you to focus on the on the individual chapters as opposed to the whole narrative but yeah it, it, I I think that's that's a great way to great way to do it not that I'm telling you how to do your shit but. <laughs> that's that, that's a that's a great analogy because the first thing that pops into my head is oh my god there's no way I could watch the Matrix on random. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, although although really truthfully, I bet you I'll bet you that there are great editors that could, could totally recut that movie and still have it make sense <laughs> and have it and have it jump throughout time, you know. Because the thing is, is that like it, it really is. It's it's like that's and that's and and it's funny like that's. One of the uh, that for me is kind of like why I only listen to albums sort of as albums, because there's even even though they seem like disparate kind of kind of things, there's always some even the people making it. There's just there's just what they're going on in the, at that time at that moment in the uh, on the universe. You know, like, like it's always going to affect things. It's always going to sound like it was made at this moment in time with these people in this place. So um, yeah, I love it, man. I I, I love it. I, it's so cool to like to see how. How when you when you do anything you take anything out of the ether and make it real, um, how how it not only captures the what it is that you want it to be but it also captures the time and the place it was made you know what the materials it's made on like it's just awesome you know yeah. it's so cool. Hey, um, and speaking of which, we have a little music we like to play at the end of the show that I'm just going to go ahead and hit right here. That was made by Kevin McLeod over in Competech.com. Um, if you like this show, if you like other shows like it, just go cruise on over to RitualMisery.com. You can find me at Ethan Kane. Of course, you got uh, uh, at Mike TV of GSG, and you got at Jerry Fax. Uh, say hello. Which way do I go? There we go. He's seeing you. <laughs> Oh.
Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>